please welcome MIT professor and 2015 National Inventors Hall of Fame inductee, Jonas Janis. This discovery changed my professional life. The discovery we made, Dr. John Burke, my surgeon colleague and myself, it was a big surprise, totally unexpected, and hard to believe. It used to be called artificial skin, but it was soon recognized as the first example of organ regeneration in adults. Being inducted to the National Inventors Hall of Fame is, is a very, very big honor for me, especially when I look at the names of other people who have been previously inducted, names like Steve Jobs and Wozniak, Louis Pasteur, the Wright brothers, important names that I grew up with. It, it really makes me feel a little small. My photo was shown like I was the leader of a totalitarian regime. A little too much for me. What I see is what used to be many, many years ago when this discovery was made. Some of our nation's greatest living inventors. The recognition that this work is getting will make it more clear there is something here that has future and needs to be developed by other people and made into one of the brand new tools of medicine. In 1969, I was an, an assistant professor at MIT. I thought that it would be a great idea to meet one of the doctors in the Boston area. That person turned out to be Dr. John Burke, who was then head of the Shriners Burns Institute in Boston. I found in him a very difficult problem in medicine that I thought I could contribute to its solution. And I think what he saw in me was a material scientist who could create a material that would be useful to treat his patients. There was a mutual clicking that happened when we met. Dr. Burke was looking for a very sophisticated Band-Aid. He had patients who were mostly children. The children had massive burns, basically the prelude to death, unless you do something drastic about it. I remember very clearly the day that Dr. Burke took me on a tour of one of the wards. It was a very, very difficult sight. I was shocked. I was shocked beyond belief in what was I was seeing there. It was a very important uh, moment in my life because it, it uh, guided me towards a direction that I would not have chosen. I remember the children were lying in their beds. There was extensive bandaging of faces and limbs in these kids. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Burke would softly explain the situation to me. These pictures in my mind have stayed with me. They became the reason why I started working on this project. Um, there was a great deal of human misery that uh, was confronting me. And I felt I had to do something about it. It was clear we needed to solve the problem as soon as possible. The objective of speeding up the rate of closing of these wounds, that in effect became the problem that Dr. Burke and I would have to solve. My students and myself were synthesizing polymers from different chemical families, things like plastics, rubbers, textile fibers, and the tissues 
of our body. We were putting these dressings in foils. We would then take the subway to Boston and then go to the Shriners Animal Laboratory facility. The technician would then put them on the animals. This was going on family after chemical family. None of the dressings we had worked with had any effect on the speed of closure of these wounds in the animals. So far, the project had been a total failure. I started thinking that maybe a polymer I had been working with in my PhD thesis, which was collagen. A collagen is, is the polymer of the tissues of the body, that maybe I should try this since almost everything else had failed. Lo and behold, this collagen dressing, instead of speeding up the rate of closure, it actually delayed it and made it very, very slow so that the wound would hardly close. We were basically going the wrong way. Instead of making it close faster, we're making it close slower. Nobody likes to have a failed experiment. It's the last thing you want. Trying to get to understand why the experiment had failed was a very important step. This was a, a, a great moment for myself and for Dr. Burke. It was a great moment because of what we decided to do with that failure, which was to not just let go and go home and cry, but to start trying to understand what had happened it was then that we saw that the animals that had been treated with the collagen dressings were not making scar as every other animal before had done. The last dressing we had used was actually causing new skin to be formed instead of scar. Skin, not scar. Skin that functions like skin as opposed to scar that does not function like skin. In addition to keeping children alive, it gave them the chance to regrow the skin that they had lost. It was way beyond what I expected. It was way, way beyond that. We could hardly find it possible to publish our results because people would not want to publish a paper that says that you have regenerated something that everybody knows you cannot regenerate. Dr. Burke was very happy because he could see now a new way of treating his patients that did not exist before. Back in the 1970s, there were a lot of advances in ICU care. And as a result of that, these very severe burn patients were able to be kept alive for long periods of time, but they oftentimes didn't have enough donor sites or skin to cover them up. So it was a, a bleak time. Dr. Burke was a surgeon who espoused the concept of early excision and grafting. That was universally adopted back then. Taking a patient to the operating room early on to carry out excision and grafting was a dangerous prospect for the patient. The excision can easily lead to very significant blood loss. In addition, harvesting donor sites can lead to significant blood loss. So you needed a surgeon like Dr. Burke who was meticulous, who was careful, and did this relatively new technique to make this invention successful. The availability of Dr. Burke and Yanas's artificial skin, which became known as Integra, tipped the scale towards early excision and grafting of large body surface area burns. Our skin is made up of two layers, the outer epidermis and the inner dermis. When the epidermis is damaged, it grows back quickly and it regenerates. But when our dermis is damaged, the dermis never grows back by itself. Instead, the wound contracts and forms a scar. Now, when our regeneration template, or what used to be called artificial skin, when that is used, something entirely different takes place. The contraction is stopped, and the cells of the person move into the template. There, the cells regenerate a new dermis, while the template is broken down and absorbed. Not only 
are you able to solve the acute burn problem and keep the patients alive, but at the end you're able to give them the skin that's more natural, that's supple, pliable with less scar. Back before advances like Integra were available, patients like Lauren who had 35% full thickness burn injuries were at risk of dying. And now our goal is to try to restore them as much as possible to the state that they were in prior to having the injury. So that is an absolutely transformative change in burn care over the course of my lifetime and what uh, Dr. Burke and Dr. Yanas did has played a huge role in that change in our goals. You look so good, you've made my day. <laughs> it is quite clear that many lives were saved by the development of the artificial skin. We have a patient at Shriners right now who sustained an over 80% deep second and third degree burn and his life was clearly saved by the use of Integra. My name's Matthew Hicks. You're gonna get shy? Yeah? No. This is my son, Mason. He's eight years old. He was burned on 87% of his body. And uh, he, uh... Mason has the most incredible personality. He's very easy to fall in love with. You know. He's no longer stuck in a wheelchair. He just learned to walk a year ago again, and he's out playing soccer. He's playing with the kids in the neighborhood, and he's, he's like a regular kid again. He was burned on 87% of his body, in and out of surgery every other day for a good two, three weeks. They were using a lot of different things to, to cover his skin, including Integra. We're in the reconstructive part of his surgeries at this point. Nothing holds him back, you know, nothing at all. Integra definitely had an integral part in saving his life. There was no way he had enough of his own skin to cover his body. Without it, God, I have no idea where we'd be. What would, you know, he wouldn't. I don't think he'd still be here. To younger faculty, I would say, Go where the ignorance is maximum, because that's where you're gonna discover the goal. What is meant by this is that many young researchers go where everybody else is doing research. And basically they add an incremental piece of value to what has happened before. I would go where there already is no value established by others, because no one has tread that ground. I was born in Athens, Greece. I had somewhat of an early introduction to science. When I was six or seven year old, I got hold of a little bottle of tincture of iodine and putting it over a gas flame in the kitchen of my home. The alcohol evaporated. And there I was holding the test tube with a couple of little beautiful light purple crystals of iodine. It was actually one of the most beautiful things I had seen. I will never forget that. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2015 National... When Dr. Burke and I got together and started uh, working, that was a step that very few people today in science or medicine undertake. It's a step that requires working across disciplines, which means working in areas that you are not comfortable with. Like, I was not comfortable in Dr. Burke's surgeries, and he was not comfortable with my molecules. The fact that we got together was something that was very difficult, and I would credit this with the success that we eventually got. There are two sources of satisfaction that a person in my position has. One is the opportunity to see people treated with something that he has helped discover. And that's a very big, big deal. The 
other is that if you're a scientist and you see what's going on on the other side of the mountain that nobody else has, it's a very, very strange feeling. It's like looking at a vista that is brand new and has never been seen. And I like that as well.